Okay, hypocrites, today's your day of reckoning. You better watch out if you're a hypocrite. Well, you might say, well, sure, that's what's uh, going on in the Old Testament today. Um, the, the Malachi, the prophet, the word means my messenger. So we don't know what the author's real name was, but he was inspired to preach God's word, and he's preaching against the phony priests of the temple who are laying burdens on people. Problem is, in times of persecution, people get faith-filled very often. They, they get energized. And then when the persecution leaves, they were leaving Babylon, going back home. Oh, it's all over. Now we don't have to pray anymore. But that's exactly what was going on. And not only among the people, but among the, the priests and the scribes, those who are in, in, the, in, in the temple area offering sacrifices. And, and God says through Malachi, hey, priests, this commandment is for you. If you don't listen, if you don't lay it to your heart, if you don't give glory to my name, I will send a curse on you. Whoa, God saying he's going to curse us. You know, we, we don't like to hear that. We always say, oh, God loves, and oh, God does this. And at times, he needs to stand us up and say, bang, right across the head. You need a shot in the arm and a shot in the face to realize what you're all about. And then, of course, there's Jesus in, in the gospel today. He continues that. The poor Pharisees and, and, and the scribes. The Pharisees and scribes take their seat, but they're all phonies. They do nothing, he's ta saying. They, they, they take, place burdens on people's shoulders, and they don't lift a finger to help those burdens. <sighs> well, I don't know if authentically Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees and the scribes alone here. This is the Gospel of Matthew, written around the year 80 plus. So don't forget, yes, they had the ipsum verbi, the very words of Jesus, being passed on from the time of Jesus to the early Christian communities, and eventually the evangelists pick those words up and incorporate them into their Gospels. Each of the four have their own versions. But we don't really think that anyone was there with, with, with a camera or notes or Twitter to get the tips of the very words of Jesus. So we know that Jesus was preaching here, and I think Matthew has him very, very interesting. He says, the scribes and Pharisees, but he really means all of us. Not even all of them, because he speaks to the crowds and his disciples. And you don't think he's saying, now, guys and like to say, well, I, I dress fancy. I had another vest when I was going to wear today, but it, 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 I, with this gospel, I couldn't wear that vest. It was a very fancy vestment. It, it was, it's made in, uh, in Thailand. It, the material's in Thailand, but someone made it into a vestment for me. I'll wear it next week. It's very, it's outlandish. It's like a lot of gold, but it's green. And if I wore that w with this, when Jesus is talking about the hypocrisy of, of the priests who widened their phylacteries, that's those, the breastplates they wore with the names of the 12 tribes or their, or their tassels, you would say, oh, sure, look, look at skirt. He comes out like uh, baby Jesus, the infant of Prague, all dressed up in gold. But I don't want to do that. So that's why I, 
You know, I was going to say, that's why I went humble today. I, that's our goal for all of us, hum, humility. And I'm, you know I'm not humble. I mean, that's, that's something, that's my biggest thing I'm working on each day of my life. But, and you know that, right? You know that, right? And everybody agrees with that. So, so I don't want to say I came out this way because I want to be humble today. No, I came out this way so, so the, the vestment will preach the gospel as well as the preacher preaching the gospel. So we, we need to be real, in realization that Jesus' word is here today being pronounced, the same word that was pronounced during the first century, coming from the word himself, Jesus. So that word has lasted 2,000 years, 2,000 plus years. And it's as authentic now as it was then. When Jesus asks us to, to really believe and act like people who believe and act like people who really take seriously the gospel. Yeah, he's, he's aware that in Malachi, the priests were criticized. And please, as priests, we have a list you can criticize us about, all of us, all the priests. N nobody is exempt. But we're not a church of priests up here. We're a church of priests out there. We all share in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. So all of us are responsible for putting our words and actions before us. It's good that you come here and it looks like a show. It looks like you're looking at me and I'm performing. That ain't, that ain't what's happening. It's just the structure of our buildings caused that to look like that, like a theater, like a, like a, a basilica used to be or the, the theaters of, of ancient days. But it only looks like that. It's not that. We are worshiping. We are taking the word of God. We are internalizing the word of God. Not like the priests of the time of Malachi when they came back out of, out of uh, drudgery and they came out of persecution in Babylon. They weren't listening to the, the covenant that they were preaching. And God says, you know, I'm going to get even with you guys because you're embarrassing me. I'm God, you're representing me, and, and you're making me look like a fool. Uh, you might want to say, 21st century, you know the word nuns, N-O-N-E-S? You know how many times that's checked off as the number one religious affiliation on forms that people fill out, especially millennials? And why? Why is N-O-N-E the number one checkoff box? Probably because those under that form, Christians of all denominations, Jews, Muslims, any religious person, maybe the religious people are not living up to the mandates that they are teaching about. And that happened in the time of Jesus. Do what the rabbis say, do what the priests say, but don't imitate them. Whoa! Whoa! Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy comes from a Greek term and Greek theater. And when the mask was put on, because that's what they, that they had their almost like their megaphones built into the masks so people could hear them projected, they put that, that was a hypocrisy. That was a different person putting on that mask. And then the same person could put on another mask and be another character. So you get the idea of what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about hypocrisy. You put on this face, you put on that face, you put on this face, and they're all going to take you to hell. Unless the face that we put on is the face of Jesus. The face of care. The face of concern. Pope Francis, in his letter, The Joy of the Gospel, says, Life is attained and matures in the measure that it is offered up in order to give life to others. This is certainly what mission means. And that's what Paul was talking about. I came, I worked with you, and it was drudgery. It was toil, but I did it. I just thought, oh, it's too, too hard, I'm going to give up on it. No, I give it. I gave it to you because it was the joy of the gospel that I received from God. It's not my human word, as it was human as I gave it, but it was the word of God. And that word of God is now at work in us. Yeah, he says in you, the people of Thessalonica. But that word of God is still alive in us. 
And sometimes we do our darndest to stifle that word, regrettably, through hypocrisy, through saying one thing and doing the, the other. I think in Paul's example, it's, it's easy to figure out that the gospel, yes, is the whole story, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the whole New Testament, the whole thing, but the gospel is you and me. We bring the gospel out there. We make it real or artificial. We make it alive or dead. We make it glorious or hypocritical through every aspect of our lives. Now, all of us are getting warm and toasty. We're, we're starting to see the, the decorations for Thanksgiving and decorations for Christmas and, the, and the, the requests are coming in the mail and here at the church, the food and all that. And that's nice. We all like to do that, give to the poor. But we need to give to the poor that kind of concern consistently, not just Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter and some other holiday. And it's not only consistency in love for the poor, because don't forget, Jesus tells us the mandate, the mandate is love. We had Socrates try to teach the people well before Christ came on the scene about the moral life. Aristotle gives, him, gives us ethics, how to live the life. The Pharisees maintained 613 laws as part of the covenant. Moses gave us the Big Ten. Jesus gives us one. To love the Lord your God with your whole heart, your whole soul, and your neighbor as yourself. And that's the law that we are carrying into the world. And yes, it's very obvious when Catholic Charities, Caritas, and all the Catholic organizations reach out to the poor and victims of hurricanes and, and inner cities and, and so on, and, and we join them. That's all very obvious, but it needs to be consistent where we are, in our seats. Jesus says the Pharisees hold the seats of Moses. Yeah, well, we have the seats of Jesus. We have the authority to be Jesus to the world. And we have to ask ourselves, how am I? How am I acting in that, that mandate of love? We're asked to be holy as God is holy. These scriptures didn't come, let's sit down and write a nice story about ourselves. These scriptures came out of blood, sweat, and tears. These scriptures came out of reality, especially Paul. His community was, was being challenged and he's saying, hang on, folks, hang on, because the word that you have is the word of God. Don't, don't worry about the mayor, the governor, the president, all that. that. That's not your word. The word you have is the word of God, and that's the word we, as Christians, need to live. And we not only need to live it, we need to act as if we're living it. You know, it's a tough job being a Christian, but somebody's got to do it.